Hello and welcome to Season 7, Episode 11 of the Data Governance Podcast. And today I'm joined by the lovely George Firican of the Lights on Data show. Um, he is a fellow data governance expert and as passionate about data governance as I am. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And I hope you are too. So I am very excited this week to have the wonderful George Firkin on the podcast. I'm sure most of you will have already heard of George. And if you haven't, you really should follow him because George is the founder and CDO of Lights on Data. And he's the host of the Lights on Data show podcast. And he shares his extensive experience in data governance, business intelligence, and data analytics. Now, George is really committed to demystifying data complexities. And he covers practical and inform oh, I can't even say it, informative content that supports professionals in navigating the data space more effectively. He's an award-winning data professional, and he really is he's recognized on LinkedIn as a top voice in data governance, and he's dedicated to making a meaningful impact in the data community. So it was only ever going to be a matter of time before I had to have George on the podcast. So it's so lovely to have you here. Welcome, George. Oh, thank you so much, Nicola. It's such a pleasure for me to be here. And uh, as you know, I've been following you and your content for a long time, and I'm so happy that we get to do this together. <laughs> Thank you. As I was say, it sounds like a mutual appreciation society, but um, you did a <laughs> webinar when I was arranging the Fedama UK many years ago, and yeah, obviously been a great fan of yours ever since. Well, I think I was before that. It was a great excuse to contact you to do that webinar. <laughs> so um, I'm sure yeah, I'd be surprised if anybody listening to this hasn't heard of you. And if you haven't, go and follow George after you've listened to the podcast. Um, but go, definitely go and follow him on um, LinkedIn and YouTube. But, you know, I don't know how much everybody who you know, sees your, your content online actually knows about you. So I'd love to kind of ask you kind of the, the question I ask a lot of my guests, which is how long have you been working in data governance? And then what always interests me is how did you get into it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy to. It's probably been, I don't know, maybe 15 years or more. I feel like after the first 10 years, you stop counting, you know, how long you've been working data governance. But it's also, um, you know, uh, hard for me to answer because, you know, how does one kind of step into data governance? They kind of fall into data governance. They get pushed into data governance. So I feel, at, 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 you know, at one time there was a certain transition that I was learning about data governance. And so it, it, it's kind of blurring the lines when that thing happened. And here's why, I, you know, I started my career as a software developer, web developer, and then worked as a business analyst, PM. And in those roles, I was working on all these tech projects for uh, mostly e-commerce sites, and you would interact with a lot of data, of course. And as a PM, you kind of got to see a lot more the impact on how you were uh, programming certain things, anywhere from like architecting your database to creating different forms. Uh, in the software or in the back end, the e commerce side. And as a PM, you could again really see a lot better how then the client would use that. And if things weren't planned properly, how the data had, uh, you know, some unwanted consequences or secondary uses that you weren't thinking of it initially. And so, slowly but slowly, I think I, I kind of got into the data governance world and the fact that it existed. And so my role slowly transitioned into that at one point, uh, not necessarily by title, but more by function and by uh, responsibilities. And I remember I went to the first uh, data governance conference. It was like a data governance information quality conference. And that's when like my world really opened up and I was like, wow, this is way bigger than I thought it was it existed. And there's so many people and companies that have the same challenges that I'm facing at that point. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I kind of picked up a role um, that was like a data quality manager and that sort of morphed into a data governance role. And so it was kind of slowly transitioning uh, into it. And now I feel like it's even more um, bigger than, than that. And it's getting even more traction now with AI governance as well. And of course, you know, I think that's based on data governance. So I'm very happy to kind of see um, data governance be more and more into focus and more and more organizations having at least one role dedicated to data governance. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's interesting you saying that about AI governments. I, I totally agree with you. And I also, you know, I wonder whether that will perhaps prompt more people, perhaps the younger generation coming up to choose to go into data governance. Because I think so mm -hmm. many of us that have been doing it for a number of years got into it by accident or osmosis, as you say. It's kind of, we, we didn't go, oh, when I grow up, I want to be a data governance consultant right. or data governance lead. It just kind of happened. Um, but I think, as you say, there's more demand for data governance than ever before. We, you know, people are finally believing us when we've said this is really a foundational thing that everybody should be doing before they do anything else with their data. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's exciting times for data governance. So I'm sure you've come across the same as me, people who understand the theory of data governance, but still it doesn't go very well for them. Um, and I think a lot of it comes down to the characteristics <laughs> The people have yeah. so um i'm going to put you on the spot here and say you know what characteristics do you have that make you successful at data governance and why do you think they do uh okay so maybe there's five things that i can think of mm -hmm. so uh, the first two what well the first one is um, to make sure that you have that strategic vision that you can kind of see the larger picture and be able to forecast how the data strategy is kind of aligned with the business goals. I think that that's crucial because then having that vision kind of um, is guiding the development of effective data governance uh, frameworks and implementations to, yes, address the current needs, but also anticipate future challenges, future opportunities as well. So kind of, you know, thinking of two at the same time. The second one, you also need to be detail oriented. So yes, high level, but also detail oriented. You know, I, I feel that data governance really demands that meticulous attention to detail. You know, it's, yeah, whether yeah. it's ensuring compliance or managing the you know nuances of data quality, and definitely on the data quality piece and so many other areas, you need to pay a lot of attention to details um, and really have a drive for uh, going into what's that root cause of everything and kind of try and fix fixing that. So. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, making sure that nothing gets overlooked and uh, maintaining that integrity and reliability of, of data. The third one is the communication skills. I think effective communication is crucial in data governance. Uh, data governance comes with a lot of change, and you do need to always communicate what you have done, what you're doing, what you're going to do, and always try and tie those three to the goals of the organization, to the goals of the business, and even the individual. So you, I think you always need to communicate um, that and also be able to bridge that gap between the technical teams and the business stakeholders and you know create that uh, collaborative environment between all these groups. So that requires a lot of communication. Yeah. Fourth, I think you need to have some adaptability. I mean, everything is constantly evolving and changing anywhere from the data landscape to the business needs to the regulations. So um, you kind of always, you, you need to expect it. So you, you need to be okay with uncertainty and the fact that what you're doing right now might need to change tomorrow and that that's okay. And the last one, I think you do need to also have a passion for education. I know I do. And not just learning, of course, but also uh, teaching, imparting your knowledge as well, and educating others about the importance of data governance. I feel even in um, um, companies with a robust data governance culture, you always need to continue that communication, that education for new employees and for existing employees, and to kind of amplify their data literacy, if you will. I know some people don't like the, the data literacy term, but... No. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you though. No, I, I think they're all really excellent things. And, they, and I think you've got that, you know, you've got that tension of what you're saying is being able to see the big picture and that helicopter view all the way down to then being interested in the details. And and some people tend to like one or the other and not both. As mm. you say. And, and then on top of that, you've got to be this great communicator and educator. I mean, my husband doesn't work in data, but um, in the early days, he would ask, you know, people would ask me at, at dinner parties, you know, what is it you do? And he'd go, oh, she goes to meetings. She's never at a desk. She never returns phone calls. And I used to go, yeah, but I'd be a really rubbish data governance manager if I was always at my desk because I am out there <laughs> communicating, educating. Definitely. So I think they're all excellent, George. Thank you for that. Now, I think it's fair to say that, um, you know, even if you understand the theory and the concepts of data governance, it's never that easy to do. So I always mm -hmm. like to ask my guests, what do you wish you'd known when you were just starting out in data governance? What would have helped you to have known in advance? 
And you know what? If if I would have known that, I don't know if I would have went into data governance. So, you know, caution ahead here if you're going to, you know, want to skip ahead for a couple of minutes. <laughs> but I think the fact that there's a lot of politics involved, I, I feel there, and, you know, that comes with its own challenging, of course, and the different personalities that you need to um, communicate and collaborate to. And some are, you know, strong personalities. Some people really make the case that they want ownership over that when they shouldn't be the ones taking ownership. Others is like nobody wants ownership and then that's a, a whole other challenge. Mm -hmm. So like you said, I think there's a lot of meetings, a lot more than I was expecting, uh, but I can definitely see the value of why so many meetings are required. And um, yeah, you probably, in a way, I, I wish I would have taken some like negotiation course skill building um that I think that would have been helpful early on instead of me kind of learn by doing and trying different tactics and what applies to different people. Yeah. So I think I, it would have been good that for me to That is such great advice. That. So I totally underestimated the value of negotiation skills until my sister, who nothing to do with data whatsoever, um, did a negotiation skills course at work. And then she's ended up in a contract management role. So does a lot, uses the skills she learned. And, and she would be telling me things and I'd be going, my God, I need to do that. <laughs> it's really <laughs> useful. So I did actually do a negotiation skills course just before COVID. But I've been doing data governance a long time. But, so I think that's excellent advice. Oh, go and get yourself on a negotiation skills course. I think that's really good. And, and I think, I mean, this is probably something you do all the time, um, much as I have online, offering advice to people who are perhaps in the early stages of doing their data governance. But I think a lot of the people listening to my podcast are those in the early stages of, of data governance. So I just wondered if there's like a final piece of advice that you'd offer for those mm. that are just starting out in their data governance journey. Yeah, just a couple that comes to mind. I think overall, maybe... Um, you know, curiosity, collaboration, communication are your greatest tools or some of your greatest tools. I do recommend um, people to dive deep into understanding the deal life cycle overall. Um, and um, yeah, of, of course, you know, kind of going to fostering those strong relationships across your organization. As, as I mentioned, that's where negotiation kind of plays in, but you do need to to build up that collaboration environment and you need to have good relationships across the board to make your job easier, of course. So yeah, just remember that th this role, I think is really pivotal in bridging that gap between uh, data and decision-making. And um, yeah, it just, um, yeah, uh, yeah, invest into all of these. Yeah, absolutely. You're making me think actually of another course I did long before I got into data. Mm. Uh, when I was a project manager, I was sent on a stakeholder management skills course. And as you were saying that, I suddenly thought, you know what, I, I think I do still use things that I learned then that perhaps at the time just going, oh, just a project manager, I've just got to get this project over the line. But perhaps they went in and they were influencing what I've been doing. But <laughs> and I, I think what you've been describing is, is what we know. You, you actually have to have many skills <laughs> to do data governance. Um, and, and a lot of them people orientated. So yeah, it's been absolutely fabulous having you on the podcast. Thank you so much, George. And I'm sure it's helped everybody understand you a little bit better. Um, but Thanks, it's, uh, it, anybody who's listening, if you aren't following George on LinkedIn, do go and find him. He shares some really great content that will help you on your journey too. So thank you so much, George. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Is great discussing data governance with somebody who is enthusiastic about it as I am. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. But more importantly, I hope you'll come back and join me next week for the last episode of this season. Can you believe it? We've got to 12 already. So please come and join me next week. We're going to round off the season by talking about data governance and the three lines of defense. Now, if this is a concept that you've not heard of before, definitely join me because it's something that um, whether it's you work in a sector that uses that concept or not, everybody I've explained it to always finds it really valuable and useful. So I hope you'll join me then.